Example, find dy dx in the slope of the graph of the polar curve at the given value of theta. r is equal to 2 plus 2 sine theta, and theta is equal to pi over 2. We want to find dy over dx. We want to find the derivative. x is equal to r cosine theta, which in this case is equal to 2 plus 2 sine of theta times cosine theta. R is 2 plus 2 sine theta, so we're, we'll replace R with the 2 plus 2 sine theta. Y is equal to R sine theta, which is equal to 2 plus 2 sine theta times sine theta. Well, in order to take the derivative, uh, let's, uh, we, could, we could do the product rule, but let's distribute cosine through. We have 2 cosine of theta plus 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. We'll still have to do the product rule on this part. This is equal to 2 sine of theta plus 2 sine squared theta. We want now dy over dx. We want the derivative of y on top. That'll be 2 cosine of theta. Derivative of sine is cosine. Then we have plus 4 sine of theta times cosine of theta. And that is, that's the chain rule. All over, that's the derivative of y. Now we need the derivative of x. We have negative 2 sine of theta. And then we have plus first, which is 2 sine theta plus first, times the derivative of the second, which is negative sine of theta, so there's first times derivative of second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is cosine theta. We want to evaluate this at theta equals pi over 2, but it says find dy dx. We should probably simplify this first. This is equal to 2 cosine of theta plus 4 sine of theta, cosine of theta, all over, we have negative 2 sine theta minus 2 sine squared theta plus 2 cosine squared theta. And we can evaluate this at theta equals pi over 2, which is equal to, let's see, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. We have 0 plus cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so the top is going to be 0. In the denominator, we have negative 2 sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. We have negative 2. Sine squared, that'll also be 1. So we have minus 2 and then plus 0, which is equal to 0 over negative 4, which is equal to 0. Let's see if that is actually 0. Let's go to y. Actually, we can go to window, uh, not window, but mode rather, and put the, our calculator into polar form. And I've actually already entered this in. Now we can go to y equals 2 plus 2 sine theta is our equation. And when we graph this, we notice that when pi over 2, or when theta equals pi over 2, the slope is actually 0. And you can calculate that value on your calculator. It will give the derivative. And we can say calculate the derivative at pi divided by 2. And it will tell us that the derivative is actually 0. Find the points of horizontal and vertical tangency to the graph of this equation right here. Well, x is equal to r cosine of theta, not sine. That's equal to 2 minus 2 cosine of theta times cosine of theta, which is equal to 2 cosine of theta minus 2 cosine of theta squared. y is equal to r sine of theta, which is equal to 2 minus 2 cosine of theta times sine of theta, which is equal to 2 sine theta minus 2 sine theta cosine of theta.
Now we want dy over dx, which is equal to, we need the derivative of y, that's 2 cosine of theta minus first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which will be cosine. And that's all over, that's dy. We need dx on the bottom. We have negative 2 sine of theta and then minus 4 cosine of theta, reduce the power by 1, and then times negative sine of theta. We now need the points of horizontal and vertical tangency. So let's try to find the horizontal tangents. That's when the derivative is 0, and so we need to know when the top is 0. Well, we have 2 cosine of theta, and then it looks like we have plus 2 sine squared theta, and then we also have uh, minus 2 cosine squared theta, and we want to know when that is equal to 0. Let's go to our calculator and find out when this equation is equal to zero. And we'll have to go back to uh, more of a normal mode, the function mode. And in y equals, we'll put 2 cosine of theta, or in this case x, plus 2 sine, well, let's see, we need parentheses for this. We have sine of x and then squared minus 2 parentheses. Uh, we need cosine of x squared and we're going from 0 to 2 pi so on the window on the x let's go 0 to 2 pi and we'll graph this we actually have four places where the graph this one is going to be 0 at 0, 2 pi, and then 2 more in the middle. So let's go to calculate. We need a 0. And we will arrow back to the left of this 0. Enter. Then we'll go to the right. Enter. And then we will make a guess right there. And we have a theta value of... 2.094, so 2.094. That value is right now stored into X. Well, that doesn't really matter. 3951. 3951. So that's what theta equals. We have uh, also theta equals 0. We have theta equals 2 pi, but that's really the same thing. And then we have one more value that we need to get. Let's go calculate a 0. And it looks like it's between, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we can just go 4, 5, and guess uh, 4.2. Four point one eight eight, so four point one eight eight. Let's get a little more. Seven nine zero two. Seven nine zero two. Now we need the vertical tangency, and that's when the denominator is equal to zero. So for vertical, we need negative two sine of theta minus four cosine of theta. We'll just do this. How about sine of theta and make that a plus? We want to know where that is equal to zero, and that will be the vertical tangents. We go to y equals. We'll clear this out, and we have negative 2 sine of theta plus 4 cosine of theta and sine of theta. Let's graph this from 0 to 2 pi. Hmm. 
there are one, two, three, four, five places where we have zero. We have zero and two pi, and we have three in between that we have to find the zeros for. Let's calculate the zero for the first one, which is between zero and two, and it's somewhere around one, I suppose. And we have a theta value of 1.04719.76. Let's get the next one between 1, 2, 2, and 4 for sure. So we can calculate a 0 between 2 and 4, and maybe we guess 3. So at 3.1415927, I recognize that value as pi. We have theta is equal to, let's get the third one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, between 5 and 6. So we'll calculate a 0 between 5 and 6, and how about 5.2 as a guess? And we have 5.2359878. But we also have 0 and 2 pi. Now at zero, we can't have both a horizontal and vertical, so we have to decide which one does x equals zero actually belong. Let's evaluate the derivative at zero, and we'll use the simplified version. This is actually, this is the top, this is dy, and this right here is the simplified version of dx. So we're evaluating at zero, evaluating at theta equals zero, uh, let's plug 0 in. We got cosine of 0 is 1, so on top we have 2. Sine of 0 is 0, that's going to be 0. And then we have minus 2. The cosine of 0, again, is 1. Now in the denominator, both this one and this one have sine in it, so the denominator will be 0. We have 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. Let's use L'Hopital's rule to actually evaluate what uh, the value is going to be. So we have limit as theta approaches zero of the top here, we need the, the, the derivative, is going to be negative two sine of theta and then plus four sine of theta cosine of theta and then minus four cosine of theta and then times negative sine of theta. So there's the derivative of the top. And now we need the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be negative 2 cosine of theta, and then plus 4 cosine of theta. There's first times the, the derivative of the second, and then plus the second, which will be sine of theta, times negative sine of theta. And now to, uh, this is the derivative, and to get the limit we're actually going to evaluate when theta is equal to zero. The sine of zero is zero, so that's going to be zero. This is going to be zero, and that's going to be zero. So we have zero on top. Let's see if we get zero in the denominator. We have negative two, negative two. We have plus, uh, this is going to be four, and this is actually going to be zero. So we have zero over two, which is equal to zero. So the winner is not horizontal, uh, or excuse me, not vertical, but actually horizontal. So this one is not true. Uh, the, the slope is not vertical at zero. It's actually horizontal. So we have a winner right there. Now we are asked to find the points of horizontal and vertical tangency. And all we've really done is found out what theta is. We need to find out what the R's are uh, to finish up the problem. So we have a theta of two point zero nine four and we're going to need the R. So let's go back to the calculator and we'll plug in two minus two uh, cosine of two point point zero nine four. And we get a value of two point nine nine nine. So I'm guessing that's just going to be uh, well, let's let's make it 
Now I need a value of zero. So we can do entry and we can make this zero, which is zero. So we have the point zero, zero. And for another horizontal tangent line, we have entry and we can just change this to 4.188. 7902 and we get exactly pretty much exactly three so we get uh, a radius of three and the angle is 4.189 let's say now i'm pretty convinced that is also just going to be three for vertical we go entry and we can change this value right here uh, we can make it 1.047 one nine seven six and we get one so one is one point zero four seven and for pi that'll be easy i don't even need a calculator for that i have uh two minus two cosine of pi is negative one so we get a value of four so we have radius of four and an angle of pi and finally, we have the last one. We need uh, to get rid of this value. 5.2359878. Enter, and we get a value of 1. So this is 1, 5.236.